Uh, spoiler alert, it doesn't come in a white box, it comes in no box. So, uh, with the USB-C cable and uh, that's about it. Hey guys, Studio Patty here. So, this is actually a two-part um, video. One is some sort of a vlog on how I got the camera and where I took it on shoots and the second part is here back in the studio on my thoughts about the Leica M11 to sum it all up. So see you back here in a minute. Just stepped off the plane from my shoot in uh, Essen and I'm gonna now pick up a very exciting thing at my uh, local photography job Fotoküche. Um, I think it comes in a really neat white box. I'm gonna review it for a whole week. The only problem is that the company who provided the uh, camera didn't provide any lenses with it, so I have to get the camera, have to get the lenses later, and then I'm gonna review it for, I think, until next Friday. So I will be able to um, get to Rijeka on a shoot next week in Croatia, and I'm pretty excited about it wanted to do an unboxing experience but the uh, matter of the fact is that there is no box so like is um, known for the minimalist approach I think that's a minimalist approach to delivering a camera um, I love that it is the um, silver version so I love that it has the OG vintage look and I'm very excited to test it uh, for the next week and I'm trying to get uh, my dear friend Nuriel Molko who I'm gonna host the workshop with uh, on the phone to uh, get some pointers on how to shoot with the Leica M11 as he's been shooting with it for the past, I think, couple of months since it came out. Patrick, give me actually two minutes. I just have to quickly... Yeah, give me... A, come in in two minutes, okay? Perfect, I will. Perfect, perfect. Bonjour, monsieur. <laughs> hey, man, oh, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. You, you're prepared... Perfectly. Oh, that's a, a sweet combo. What is that, the 90? So this is the uh, 50 1.4. Okay. On the black um, M11. My first tip with the M models from Leica is practice makes perfect. Of course, the first times you're shooting, you're looking through, you don't really know how to bring these two images over each other. So the way you focus is by looking through the rangefinder turning your focus wheel and finding a corner or something you can focus on and mapping them over each other. Once mm -hmm. both of these images are clear, your shot is going to be clear. It allows you to put your focus forward, backwards, whatever is clear in the image will be sharp. A big tip for first time M shooters is shoot at a high F stop. So you know, start with 5.6, 8, shoot throughout the day because of course it's easier to find focus on a higher f-stop. The second you go down to 1.4, your margin yeah. of error is so tiny that I also have to say at 1.4 in low light, I will use um, the focus peaking. Okay. And it's no problem to use your screen for focus peaking to make sure you're really sharp, maybe double check again, and also make sure if you're doing focus peaking like this, and then you're taking the camera to your eye, that minimum distance that will move. again change the focus and that's something i also had to learn so shooting at a high f-stop is your friend especially when you're starting out and it's finding the confidence that you do have it you know you just often i have it and then i look back and forth and then i'm unconfident it takes too long just have the confidence that you got it shoot have a look and adjust cool that that's awesome this is what what i wanted to hear um, and basically, uh, also when when it comes to the focus peaking, so um, it, does it work well with you, or do you not use it often? I so I do use it a lot, but I have come to the conclusion that I shoot sharper when I'm really going with the rangefinder. I mean, that's ultimate mm -hmm. sharpness. When I'm doing food photography and I'm shooting from the top, I can't look down, so I will use focus peaking, mm -hmm. and I will notice sometimes that I'm not fully sharp because even the focus peaking you have to know how red is sharp you know mm, exactly and yeah it does work it gives you sort of guidance if i'm shooting quick 
I'm doing street photography. I did want to see more or less how far is my subject for me. Yes. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the rangefinder is your friend. And you just have to practice. You get very, once you control it, you're very quick. You know, there are photographers that know alone. It says down here, you know, yeah. distances the distance, as well. Yeah. So they'll, they'll shoot and they'll say, look, when someone is about three meters from me, everything will be sharp. So they'll keep the camera down here and they will try to shoot subjects at about three meters distance and get very incognito street shots. I haven't tried it yet. It's yeah. very difficult to master, yeah. but again, with practice, this is one of the best way to shoot street with a Leica. Cool. Check the distance, high f-stop, and shoot. Shoot from your hips. Yeah. Um, one more thing. Um, do you shoot in DNG and JPEG? I do. So I'll always shoot DNG and JPEG. I'll have the, J J the JPEG set to small and the DNG set to large. Yeah. So in that case, if I want to do a quick edit on my phone, I have an image which doesn't take up too much space. I can edit it good enough. If I want to print this image, I have the DNG as a backup. Yeah. And what I also heard is that the highest dynamic range and the best quality you will get out is with your sh when you're shooting DNG large with the 60 megabytes. Mm -hmm. um, yes, people say in very low light situations, go down, go down to the middle one or the small one. But when you have good light, shoot at the highest because it will give you the most dynamic range mm -hmm. and of course. you'll have a lot more control over the image. That's fantastic. Uh, what was the last thing? Um, what, what's the biggest difference? Because you were shooting an, uh, an M10 before, right? Yeah. Um, yes. uh, what's the biggest difference to the M11 now? So one of the reasons the black model is one that's selling out very quickly is that it's 20% lighter. You know, I was always an aluminum case guy. I love the vintage look of the Leica. But when you're carrying a camera around all day, especially with a heavier lens, then this little bit of less weight does make a difference. The M10 in black, I mean, it's, a, it's the lightest Leica camera sure. I've ever held. So, um, so that was a big benefit. Then the longer battery time is a big benefit. I do love the customizable buttons. Mm -hmm. So what I'll often do is when I notice, I don't know, I'm not creatively inspired. The light situation isn't so nice. I'll try to switch to a different profile, maybe monochrome, maybe monochrome high contrast, maybe mm -hmm. vivid, maybe flat. So there are presets on the Leica and you can shoot already in black and white and I can very quickly adjust that with yeah. a customized button. So with me, I have it on the on the wheel and I click on it and it lets me choose my film style. Cool. Then I'll just quickly switch black and white. I'll do some black and white shots, maybe get into flow again and then go back to natural or vivid. That's awesome. That, um, I mean, it has internal storage. We've all been in the situation where We've forgotten an SD card, SD card has an error. You know, you were loading yeah. pictures on your laptop, you took the camera out, so you have internal storage. You will always be able to shoot, yeah. no matter what, which is a great That's fantastic. thing. Fantastic, cool. And anything else that I that I should know about the camera? Anything else? Because I'm, I'm very excited. I have the um, the the silver model. I'm still waiting for yeah. uh, to, to get the some lens. uh, some lenses, but Leica is, is helping me out. We finally found some lenses for the M11. We're gonna pick it up at the Leica gallery here in Salzburg. How's that with the camera? Hi, Servus. So tip, if anybody wants to uh, check out some awesome photography directly in Salzburg, uh, Leica actually has their own gallery and they have wonderful photography. Uh, the collection changes every couple of months or couple of weeks. So uh, check it out, Leica Gallery Salzburg. Awesome stuff. And they just gave me the M lenses and we got the Sumi Lux and not the Sumicron, which is even better. So they go up till uh, 1.4. So I'm very excited about it to try those. Huh? Where's the lens now? <laughs> this is the good thing about Leica lenses. Uh, okay. They're so small. Cute. Is a cutie, huh? Cutie. Hi. Looks like a toy lens. Yeah. Cute is that. Toy. Does yeah. it not even have a pouch? <laughs> no. This is this is Leica. They go for the minimalist approach. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Do you want to use my coffee cup? <laughs> That would actually fit. It's a four and a half grand uh, lens. Good morning, lovely people from Croatia. I'm in Rijeka for another shoot and I have the Leica M11 with me. And it's actually really the perfect opportunity for that. I just went to the market in the morning 
uh, down the street. It's like a uh, yeah, grocery market, flowers, vegetables and whatnot. Had a coffee and a, the biggest croissant of my life. And the Leica M11 is so cool, especially when exploring a new city because it just, I have to reevaluate how I take pictures because it's just so vastly different from what I'm used to with my uh, other cameras and especially with cameras with autofocus. So it makes you look at things very differently and I really, really liked it. So out here, uh, there's actually a man um, having fun with his dog. They are playing, gonna try to capture them. And it's just very cute how the M11 makes you feel like a real beginner again because it's just a very different type of shooting but up until now it is a wonderful camera and the fact that I can hold it in my hand like this and feel really the weight it's just so comfortable and um, the Leica M11 is the camera that requires the most of a photographer's craftsmanship and definitely some spare money in your pocket it's a beauty on the outside and a beast on the inside. So here are my thoughts. Taking pictures with the M11 for roughly a week, I can honestly say that I not only understand the craze behind Leica in general, but the craze behind the M-Line especially. The Leica M11 is a beautiful camera with definitely 21st century uh, digital specs and uh, some of them are actually wonderful and I would wished that other cameras would implement that with like one major flaw when you look at it from the outside. That flaw uh, is that it doesn't have autofocus. Um, the Emlen never had autofocus and I think this is a good thing. It not only makes you shoot like you were like a photographer 50 years ago, um, but it also makes you slow down in photography. You don't run around with an M11 shooting thousands of pictures in a day, mindlessly bursting at every situation that arises. But more so, you take a step back, you take a breather, you compose your shot before, you wait for a specific moment and it takes just a huge amount of craftsmanship. And when you take the picture in the moment, you are in that moment. And I think as a photographer who is also used to this other type of photography that I just explained. It's just wonderful to take a breather and take photography a little slower. Um, when it comes to the body, the Leica M11 comes in two varieties, a black version and a silver version, where, as Noel told me, the black version is even 20% lighter. I don't mind the heaviness of the, the M11 in silver, but I still would love to try it. The body is obviously beautiful, it would never have a flip out screen ever. I think Leica is just not doing this with this very purest line of uh, cameras. And it's still fantastic because the sensor is a 64 megapixel sensor with the, the well-known uh, Leica color science in it. And it also gives you one thing that is very important for me as a newbie to the M-Line, which is focus peaking. If you're not used to manually focusing your shots uh, and you don't have a lot of um, experience or basically craftsmanship in that, meaning that you went out and took 15,000 photos just with manual focus, um, you will struggle a lot. And as Nuril said it when I got the camera, it's like, are you prepared to take a lot of blurry pictures? And he was right. But with focus peaking, um, like it gives you a modern twist on a very classic camera and I actually managed to uh, get most of my shots in focus and not too bad at all. I would love to have the, the Leica M11 as my day-to-day -day camera. As I said, it's such a small body and the Leica M lenses are just not only gorgeous in design, super teeny tiny and deliver great image quality, but they also make the M11 a combined masterpiece to take it with you every day. You just pop it into a little bag with two lenses and off you go. You're basically uh, set for any type of uh, shooting you want to do. The Leica M11 has one thing that no other camera has, or at least none of my cameras has, is internal storage of 64 gigabytes. 
And I honestly love this so much. And I want every camera manufacturer to adopt this uh, in their cameras because sometimes, even if you're very vigilant with your photography, you sometimes forget your SD card. But Leica makes it possible that you can do that and still can take great photos. One thing that I'm really missing in the M11 is the possibility to shoot video with it. There's just no option for video, which also makes it kind of a bummer to use it as a day-to-day -day camera because I love like taking small snippet videos wherever I go. And when we are at this point, so please like uh, if you ever do a M12, which probably take a couple of years, but maybe you can think about including this um, option in your next update. And while we're at it, if you ever do a Q3, um, please skip the 28 millimeter uh, lens and uh, put in your wonderful 35 millimeter uh, 1.4 Summicron lens in the Q3 and I will buy this camera like I buy ice cream on a hot day. We all know that Leica usually comes with a hefty price tag and the M11 is definitely no exception. The camera will set you back eight and a half thousand euros and if you add like one or two lenses uh, from the Summicron or Summilux line, you can add another three and a half to five thousand per lens. But then again, you cannot really say if the camera is worth it or not, because the M11 is a camera that doesn't fit into any category, as I said earlier. Um, you don't have autofocus in a camera that costs like eight and a half thousand. Um, it doesn't do video. Um, you don't have um, a flip out screen, like nothing that cameras nowadays usually deliver. So I think um, making a case of is it worth buying it cannot be made because the Leica M11 does one thing perfectly. It really makes you fall in love with photography over and over and over and over. And through this struggle and even, pay, even if you pay a lot of money for this struggle, I think it is making a valid case that it is totally worth it. And I have to put up uh, a big nice jar where I can already put money in and save up because like really one day I want to own a Leica and maybe even a Leica M model. So guys, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, any experience with Leica, please uh, drop it in the comments. If you want to subscribe, I don't mind that hit the like button and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.